most users, when we go out to a website, we're simply putting in a name or we have a bookmark for a name like youtube.com or cbtnuggets.com or twitch.com, et cetera, et cetera. So behind the scenes, that name has to be resolved into an actual IP address that has two parts to it, the network portion and the host portion, so that our routers can take those packets with the layer three information and forward them in the right direction so they can get to that server. So the main way of doing that name resolution today on the internet is using DNS, Domain Name System. So in this video, let's take a big picture look at that process, and then we'll proceed to dig in to some of the details, including the types of records that are contained in DNS. So let's begin by taking a look at the hierarchy or the organization regarding how DNS operates. Think of it like an upside down tree where we have the root at the very top. And then going down from that, we have our top level domains. So we have com and we have things like mil and gov and many more. And then below each of those domains, we have subdomains. I'll just go ahead and draw some off of com, but we have very similar for mil, gov, as well as underneath the dozens and dozens of other top level domains. So under com, let's imagine we have comptia, or perhaps that's under org. So I'll put org over here as well, because the same concepts would apply there. It just depends on what domain you're in. So comptia, and let's go and do Cisco, and let's do Palo Alto Networks. I should have picked a shorter one there. And let's pick CBT Nuggets. So at this level, we have our top level domains. And then we have these domains here, which for each of these domains, there's somebody in those domains inside those address spaces that have the information for all the hosts, for example, at comptia.com or at cbtnuggets.com or at cisco.com. And the entities that have that information are DNS servers. Specifically for Cisco, they're going to be an authoritative, specifically for any specific domain, they're going to be an authoritative DNS server. So let's walk through an example of how that works. Let's imagine computer two right here uh, types in www.cisco Dot com. Cisco happens to be a pretty dominant vendor in the world of internet working today. So we'll use them as an example. So we already know that the computer, if a user types in www.cisco.com in their browser, or they're using NS lookup, or they need to resolve that for any other reason to an IP address, they are going to be leveraging an application layer service called DNS. And in that payload, they're making a request that says, I need the IP address behind www.cisco.com. And once the application layer has that request in it, that's then encapsulated inside of UDP. And from previous discussions, we've identified that DNS requests go to the well-known port, the well-known UDP port, up port 53. And then that would be encapsulated with the layer three header, which would include the source IP address of this computer and the destination address of our DNS server. So let's imagine our DNS server is right here. <laughs> it's 192.168.1.100. So the source IP would be the PC, and the destination IP would be the IP address of the DNS server. And then it would be encapsulated at layer two with the source layer two address of the computer and the destination layer two address of this local DNS server, which if it's on the same local network, this computer could just get it by doing an ARP request. If it's IPv4 or if it's IPv6, it would be doing neighbor discovery protocol and a neighbor solicitation. But in either case, the source and destination layer two addresses would go here. And if that DNS server wasn't on the local subnet, uh, the computer would put the layer two address of its default gateway who would then take the packet and forward it to the DNS server. And then finally, the traffic gets spit on the wire. So, so let's imagine all that happens, and this DNS request goes from here over to this DNS server. And if this device is a DNS server, it is listening and paying attention to port 53 at the transport layer. So when it receives that packet, it looks at layer two, it says, oh, that's for me, opens it up, looks at layer three address, oh, that's for me, continues de-encapsulating, looks at layer four, oh, that's for me, I'm interested. And then it takes a look at the DNS request that's asking for www.cisco.com. Now this, this server, this DNS server in our enterprise, it won't know if it was just powered on. It has no idea of what the real IP address is behind cisco.com. So what this DNS server is going to do, it's going to go ask for help from the hierarchy inside of DNS on the public internet. And here's what that looks like. If it knew nothing, it could go up to the root servers and say, you know what? I need to know the name servers responsible for .com. And so the root servers could redirect or provide the information back to our DNS server about a name server for the com domain, the top level com domain. And then the DNS server can make a request to the com domain saying, hey, I need the name server for cisco.com. 
And then this com domain could respond back and it could say the name server or servers for cisco.com are, and it could point them to the actual IP address for the authoritative name server at cisco.com. And then our DNS server can make a request to the authoritative name server for cisco.com and say, hey, I, I've been asking everybody, I think you're the right guy. Can you please tell me the IP address behind www.cisco.com? At which point, hopefully this authoritative name server is going to feed that information back to this DNS server who can then feed it back to our client. Now, from the client's perspective, they may not appreciate all the work that was done, but they just made a request and this DNS server did all the other requests to sort that out. Now, one of the techniques that we leverage with DNS is a process called caching. We're gonna cache those responses. So once this DNS server has gone to the root level servers and the top level domains and to cisco.com, it's caching all the information about the name servers for those respective domains. It's also caching the information about cisco.com and www.cisco.com. And that way in the future, if another computer asks this DNS server about www.cisco.com, that information is cached locally on the server and it doesn't have to go out and make the request again. Also, local computers also have a cache. So if this computer asks for www.cisco.com and gets a response, it has that in the cache for a period of time. So if it has to go to that same site, let's say in five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour, it may still have that IP address in its cache and it may not have to go out to the DNS server and ask. So that caching is a wonderful thing, but it also leads to a little bit of a problem and that is poisoning. If an attacker or hacker can put in the wrong information regarding the IP address to go to a website, or it can manipulate the cache on a local DNS server or on a computer, the attacker could then potentially trick the user to going to the wrong IP address. <laughs> if you go to the wrong IP address, you're going to the wrong server, and then you know a hacker could actually make a website that looks like the official site, and the user might try to put in their credentials, and then at that point, the attacker has just performed credential harvesting. They just learned the credentials for a user because they tricked them in going to the wrong site. So we'll save the security and the hacking discussions for another set of videos, but I wanted to point out the overall big process regarding name resolution on the internet today. And in the domain name system, in DNS, there's lots of different types of records based on the type of device we're looking for. Maybe we're looking for an email server, perhaps we're looking for a name server, perhaps we're looking for an IPv4 address, we're looking for an IPv6 address. In DNS, each of those types of addresses have a specific record type. So in the next video, I'd like to chat with you behind the scenes about what some of those record types are in the world of DNS. So I'll see you in that next video in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.